Hello and welcome to Kin in Line. I'll make this part 127. I'm in the Herald Subs room now. Um, I have been since 1994. Um, this is one of the veterans with whom I worked, uh, Mike Utley, who we encountered earlier. He, uh, when I was on the Daily Dispatch for a few months in 75, so it was almost uh, 20 years earlier, he'd been there um, as a reporter. Anyway, I did this sort of longer sketch of the bearded mic and then a quickie on the, at the bottom there. Uh, so when you're sitting around a subs table for eight hours editing, putting headlines on, laying out pages, you don't have much time to see the world. Um, but I did manage to sketch some of my colleagues, which was something. Um, Here's another one. Uh, <clears throat> now, I wish I could remember this guy's name. Uh, it won't come to me. It will eventually, but right now it doesn't. He only worked for a few years with us. Uh, also one of these veteran journalists, you know. Look at the big muscular arm on tapping away on that keyboard. This guy, I cannot actually place. Um, no doubt seen in the office. Uh, and then I came across this. Um, so all those drawings were done on printouts from my work, because we used to have to print out each page and then read it. But this is just a little example of the sycophantic approach of the leadership on the Herald. I mean, they, they got rid of the name Eastern Province, uh, foolishly, I think. That was its actual title, Eastern Province Herald. And it just became the Herald. Anyway, they appointed this guy, Gorko, uh, the first black editor of the Herald, Jethro Gorko, who was an ex-Zimbabwean. Uh, and I had a few run-ins with him. In fact, he uh, after something I'd written, it was actually not even published, it was an email to him complaining about the fact that they were publishing pro-Mugabe type stuff, but when I submitted articles attacking Mugabe, he didn't want to use it and he got all offended when I said that this wasn't uh, actually fair or ethical. Anyway, Jethro was a per personable guy and I mean everybody liked him but uh, you didn't want to cross him. So I'm just looking what year this is, 2009. I think he spent uh, six years at the helm. And this was just, a, it was actually very clever. There were journalists who sort of still knew how to play with words. For instance, look at the, the reporter's name is, uh, good Lord, Ed's going. So the editor's going. This one's written by Paige Turner. Uh, what is this one? Sadzatko. Oh, sad to go, I think. Something like that. Anyway, so it's quite well done. And I mean, there's a nice cartoon. That this, the main story is that he was going to go back to Zimbabwe and sort out its problems, you know. Anyway. It's all sort of tongue-in-cheek. So, you know, we, you know, ethics, codes and credibility. I only kept this for these little doodle art pictures at the bottom, which are worth far more than this token attempt at ethical journalism. because by this stage, they weren't publishing anything that I wrote that was critical of the ANC or anyone else. It was a closed shop, really. Um, they used to bring out this thing on a Friday, the TGIF. Uh, 
but like everything else, you know, the, they whittled the paper down to the bare minimum. So I kept it for this little drawing and, and what I'd done to Angelina Jolie's face. Um, anyway, that was a bit of fun. And I rather liked it. So these really are just a weird collection here. Again, it's just a thing out of the imagination or out of the subconscious. What is this? Oh, this is just alerting me because I was still doing all the art reviews and art crits. They're just telling me about a, a watercolor exhibition that I had to <coughs> preview and review. Um, which I did in the morning, so I would get up. I had a long day, often from, you know, half past six till midnight. Basically didn't stop. And here we've got... And a Brett Kebble Art Awards press release. Now, Kebble ended up, uh, I think, being shot dead somewhere. Uh, he was on, he was part of the whole uh, state capture thing. But at this point, he was throwing money around at, at art exhibitions. Um, this was still the days, what year is this? 03, when we were publishing her, her articles by Michael Hartnack, Hartnack who was a real. Um, old world journalist. He lived in Zimbabwe, he lived there all his life, worked all over the world, I think, but he was covering the whole breakdown, the whole collapse of Zimbabwe. Um, yeah, and I mean, we used to have run a lot of letters. I used to be able to submit letters, but that was prevented eventually. So I kept this for this large drawing on the back. Let's just have a look what I got up to here. Because I can't remember this really. There's a big cigar with a head on the end. So let's follow the cigar. Um, three headed creature. A guy in a nappy. <laughs> oh, par for the course, really. Wacky and totally bizarre. So I have kept all these folded up pieces of printed out heralds. Uh, this was, yeah, uh, so I wrote after they'd decided to ban me from having my articles published in the Herald where I was sub-editing, uh, I wrote a, an autobiography called Apartheid's Child, Freedom's Son, and uh, Robert Ball, who wrote under the pseudonym Hugh Barkins, he had this weekly column, kindly uh, agreed to, do, to read it and review it in his column, and he wrote quite a flattering thing. So let's just see. What comes through are his love for his family and for his fellow man, his wide interests and the difficulties of a young white man growing up under the iron fist of National Party rule. Forgotten what it was like? Well, this son of freedom will remind you in his self-published book. Who would this have been back in 2003? Just another of my quirky characters, I guess. Yeah, not much there. This one I kept for these drawings. I remember I did these with my left hand. For some reason I was... You know, I used this to do some calculations. I forget what they were for. 
but I had the page on my left and I was just experimenting with how one can get a kind of a freer line using a, your second strength hand. And this guy ended up looking quite a lot like one of our senior, I think he was an assistant editor, Carl Seaton Smith, who had a sort of big moustache like that. I wonder if there's anything of interest. Yeah, it's all the leader pages. I used to print these things out and just read them because we didn't lay out those pages. So I put, when there was a bit of time, I used to read them and get that done so that I didn't have to do it the next day. Uh, this is just a blast back to my kid's past, uh, Dragon Ball Z. When back on SABC or something, they probably asked me to find out. Oh, there's another little creature. So these are all stories that had to be placed somewhere. Beachfront crime, Strali's future. He was the rugby coach, Springback rugby coach. Michael Hartnack again. And Zimbabwe's collapse. Uh, this is now before Jethro became editor in, in the late 90s and early 2000s, uh, Rick Wilson. He came as a rather large, short, quite overweight, quite feared character from Joburg. I think he was a deputy editor of Sunday Times or something. And he took over the Herald and he lost a hell of a lot of weight, started cycling, started the Herald Cycle Tour and was actually a very professional um, journalist, you know. Certainly he was very enthusiastic, which was good to see. Yeah? And he used a lot of my stuff, which I appreciated. He had the guts to do that. Now this guy was Trevor Nietling. Uh, so-called coloured chap, apparently the darling of a lot of the women. They seem to like his looks. Anyway, he didn't last with us very long. I don't know what became of him. Uh, oh, and then we got... So that's... There's Mike Holmes. These are both photographers on the Herald. Mike is retired here for now, but that was him there. And Eugene Kutsio, who was still there. And I, was, I did these about 15 or 12 years ago. In fact, this thing should tell us. No, it doesn't. In fact, there's Eugene Kutsia's byline on that caption. Oh, this is quite a blast from a past, actually. This guy was known, our only name is Edward, and he was a messenger. Well, we used to initially, from the suds room, have a guy who carried all our uh, pictures for scanning upstairs to the process department, brought us tea every couple of hours, and generally was a messenger, so we didn't have to do all that running around, wasting time. But they got rid of him eventually, or well, in fact, he personally, I think, died young. Uh, Rumour was that he had AIDS, but I, I don't know. Quite so, but I, so I did this of him very quickly. Jeff. Uh, so I've remembered his first name. This is the same guy we showed earlier. Um, sure. So they must come eventually. Anyway. Oh, more colleagues. These two, I'm not sure who they are. Likewise, this lady. She wouldn't be flattered by that face, I'm afraid. Anything else? Nope. 
as I said, I was often invited to exhibitions to review them. And here we've got Mr. Utley again with his beard. He also used to sometimes wear a kilt uh, to work with sporran and everything. He might work the whole hole. And this is him popping something in his mouth while subbing. So yeah, he was a sort of character like I did in the army when I went to that dramatic society place. You know, with a big beard, it was sort of lent itself to being drawn. And here we finally get the surname of the same chap, Jeff Bird it was. I've given the year here, signed by me in 03. And Jeff was in his same old spot, tapping away on the keyboard. He's holding a mouse there, you can see. Funny, the mouse had only been around I mean, for about, you know, three for about six years maybe. Because we transitioned to, to that sort, to the um, Windows operating system in about 95 or 6. It was about a two, three year process. So this is Jeff and just a bit of Mr. Utley at the bottom there. And I'm going to make this the last one. It's Jeff Bird again. I used, I think this kind of crayon is, we used to mark photographs, old style photographs with this. China marker it was called. Yeah, so we'll fly off now that we've found Jeff's surname. Until um, next time, cheers.